I tried to live my life uh, and it and be a good person, be a holy person, because that's what we're all called to do. I just think the world of Big Ed, he's just such a man of magnitude is the word I would use, a man of great character. My grandfather passed away and I was two years old and we went to a town, I think it was Delphus, it was Delphus. And one of the family members that we stayed with had a house that was uh, backed up to the railroad yards. And I can remember the trains, the old steam engines running back and forth. And then one other item that I can remember is that they had a ball of cotton on the screen door and that was to keep the flies away. It was a time during that time where we were in the throes of having to let go in, in, in this side of the veil, and yet the you know homecoming on the other side was coming soon. And I will, I'll never forget, Laura called me and said, another, <laughs> I don't know why, we do everything last minute, but uh, we're gonna have a prayer vigil tonight. We're just gonna go get candles, let's do this. I said, great, and before we knew, I, I don't even know, there was hundreds of people there coming down the street with candles lit, and it was just, <laughs> I mean, if there was ever a beautiful sight, it was that. And Ed, where, where things get confusing sometimes where we get hung up on religion and doctrine, um, you know, and, and what faith we are, um, he so beautifully and eloquently explained his faith um, that night to hundreds that were there of all different belief systems, of all different backgrounds and, and religions. And um, we all said the Our Father, which was really a beautiful prayer that everybody knows and it's a unifying prayer and he just beautifully explained his faith and I thought that was such a beautiful moment. My love of Mary comes from the seed that dad planted with me in the relationship with God that I have, the example that I look to of Christ and Mary as a mother that I've drawn strength and inspiration from. The most influential person was my mother. I was the oldest son in the family of eight kids. So I helped raise my siblings. I changed their diapers, I fed them, I learned to do washing. And uh, very, my, my mother and I were very close. I know the one time when I talked back to her and she slapped across the face. <sighs> we both sat down and cried. But I was close to her. Very close. Childhood memories of dad are making stepping stones for our home on 20 Elm Estates and washing cars in the driveway. It was a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him, which was nice. We would bring home materials from American Greetings, felt flowers and ribbons, and I just loved making crafts with those items, and I think he always knew how excited I would be when he brought them home. And then some memories from later on would be letters that I would get in college from him. And um, I also remember having a conversation with him when I was not having the best of luck in the dating world. And he just told me to be patient and to trust God and that God had someone special in mind for me. And um, you know, it was very consoling. You wonder what love is. Love is a word, but it has a lot of meanings and a lot of connotations. And it has a lot of responsibility. Uh, true love is giving of yourself. And that's probably the hardest because in this society today, it's more uh, a greed and it's mostly inward me. But when you find out that you give of yourself, that's when you become the most happiest. That's when life means more. And that is also uh, a, a true sense of love, is the giving of yourself and supporting your wife, your children, friends, and always keep God in your, in your life. He's, he's important. Don't have to be showy because whatever you have, it's between you and your maker. When Bella was born and she was just a preemie, I have a picture of his hand and her hand. He's always there for us and always trying to lead us and guide us, especially in our faith. Almost every single time I would go in the Corbin, Papa would pull me aside 
and try to convince me to become a priest. Everything that he does, he's very top of the line and is very uh, just knowledgeable on whether it's woodworking or his faith, I mean, history, he's always got stories to tell that go, you know, goes along with the knowledge that he has. I would describe Ed as a man of faith. It just exuberates out of him. His kind and gentle way of speaking is very endearing. Always had a smile on his face. I remember when Teresa and I went to Denise's house uh, and we colored Janae's hair. Jan and Ed both were there and we all ended up coming out with like pink hair, which I really didn't intend to do. Um, and I just remember him looking at us and laughing. Um, always easy to laugh and joyful in seeing his grandkids and his family. You could just tell that that was super important to him. I grew up, like I said, with uh, five brothers. And at one point in time, four of us were in service. I was in the Army, uh, my brother Jack was Navy, my brother Tom was Marine Corps, and my brother Bob was in the Air Force. Well, when Tom and I were due to get out of service, we decided that we were going to surprise our father. And sadly, we never told anybody that what, what we were going to do. But we planned on being home on a particular weekend. And my father had a routine. He worked two jobs during my whole childhood, and I never got to really know him until he retired and, and I was very, but I learned he had a sense of humor. But getting back to my story, we planned to meet him at a corner tavern. He walked three miles to work and he walked three miles to come back home. And on Friday, the last work day of the week, he would stop at the corner tavern, Lynch's Tavern, and have a couple of beers before he come home to, and to retire for the weekend. We stood, we, we went to that bar, we waited for our father to come in, and when he came in the side door, we all stood at the attention and saluted him. And uh, I've never seen my father cry or break down. He's always a strong man. But at that particular moment, we, we probably made him the proudest. And, uh, his response to that after he gained his senses was, bartender, set him up. These are my boys. I can't say that I'm the person I am today because of the upbringing that Dad had. <sighs> that Dad instilled upon me. Uh, he loves all of his grandkids and his kids. Just always doing loving things for all of us. We was downstairs watching a movie and I heard someone snoring and I looked over there and Papa was snoring with his head laid back on the chair with his mouth open and uh, I woke him up and he fell right back asleep. A lot of memories of accidents about taking his foot off with a Maddox to um, hitting his head on the stairs to cutting fingers and almost losing them, uh, falling off Stormy. He scared us a lot. I have many memories of dad and myself in the outdoors hunting or fishing. I can't really just pick one story, but the times we went to the lake stick out the most. When I was in high school, I bought a bass boat and I always wanted to take dad out fishing on the bass boat. So we'd go to Laurel Lake and I'd get the boat up to speed, which everybody knows I like speed. So 60, 65 mile an hour and I'd look over at dad and his double chin would be back here around his ears flapping in the wind. It's just kind of, kind of really funny. So we get to one spot and we're fishing and we're, I remember vividly, we were throwing top water baits, you know, they, they got all kinds of hooks and they're pretty dangerous. And I threw one out there and a fish hit in it and I set the hook and I thought, man, I got a good one, but there wasn't any fish and I didn't see my line. I looked back at dad and my lure was stuck in his arm of which we ended up having to go to the emergency room because he's too big of a baby just to let me yank it out. But that is probably, my vivid memories of, of dad and I are 
outdoors. Funny story about Papaw. Uh, we were in Gatlinburg, me, Jake, Mamaw, and Papaw playing Scrabble. And uh, we were in the camper. And I think, I believe Mamaw challenged one of Papaw's words. And he was sure, absolutely sure it was a word. And it turned out she won the challenge. And uh, next thing you knew, the boys had to go outside so they could settle it on inside the camper. Best advice. Young parent, You're, you've got a responsibility. When you have children, they have a responsibility and that needs to come across. And you need to keep God in your life and that your children can see that in the way you live your life. That way you become a role model, hopefully, that will help them sometime in the future. A lot of times uh, your children, uh, your own children, won't make you feel uh, that they're listening to you, but at some point they truly are. And uh, even though they may not like what you say or do, it's the best for them. And, and as a responsible parent, you need to remember that, that uh, your life is a role model for them and you need to be their hero, if you can. I first met Ed, um... Uh, at Sacred Heart Church. That was the time when I was coming to the church and he, uh, I think he was about as curious of me as I was of him because he's just like way up here and I, I was just like just coming into the church and I would go um, through the week at 8.30 Mass every morning and from there, um, you know, he befriended me and uh, he encouraged me and he, uh, he, 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 just, he just really quickly, we made a close bond. We, we become really good friends. We just had so much in common. I think, um, uh, you know, his love for the church became my love for the church. And um, he is, a, as, a, as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, just everything about Ed Metzger, I wanted to emulate in my life. And um, that's, that's, I don't know, he's just somebody really close to me in my heart. So proud to have him as a friend. Okay, now everybody knows Edward Metzger, right? Right. When I want to tell you about him with his cameras, <laughs> he was always just worrying me to death with these cameras because I hated to have pictures. I hated to have pictures of myself. And he'd say, Ann, if you know what I'm going to do if you don't turn around for me to take your picture. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to turn around. Still, he'd take my picture of my butt. <laughs> Every time of my butt. Well, Dad was hands-on in everything. Whatever my vision was, he was ready to pull it into fruition. So anything that I have asked Dad to do, whether it's help me decorate or something to build, um, he's always ready to build something or make something if we ask him. The difficult thing being the oldest son in the family um, you had to be watchful of your sibs, your siblings. And a lot of times, especially boys, there's a lot of uh, competition. Physical, mental, you name it. Uh, but that's, that's good. In a large family, you learn to cope with things that come up in your life. And uh, the family atmosphere gives the ability to, to, to adjust or to, to at least uh, I don't want to say live with people and, and understand them. Stick to your your values. He's uh, always ready to share his knowledge, whether it be about his faith or you know handy stuff in the yard or cooking or whenever we're together. I'm always learning something. He sets a high bar. He does nothing mediocre or substandard very precise. You learn something new every day and you get different responses. The uh, story about Ed is we were putting a computer room into the Corbin uh, building and to do that we had to reroute all the cables in the building to that one room and we were doing this on a Saturday and by lunch we had most of it run but all the cable ends were hanging in the computer room. And so while we were at lunch Ed decided to help us out. He was gonna make everything look nice and neat. So he cut the ends of the cables off. And in doing so, he cut all the locations off where the cables went to. So when we got back from lunch, uh, we had to redo all the work we'd done that morning 
and I got to chastise the boss the rest of the afternoon about it. So, uh, he's been a great example of what a father should be uh, through his faith and through the relationships that he built with his co-workers and you, you were truly his work family. So that's what I think of when I think of Ed. He's good with his hands. He's always crafting stuff for other people, but he made me and Noah swords out of wood and like duct taped them so they'd be safe for us to play with and have little sword fights in the backyard. My dad's dad was very close and he used to take me and do things and he would walk three, four blocks to the candy store to get candy for Betty and me. And uh, I can remember, I can remember that. A uh, funny story that I have on Papaw was uh, we was all playing hide and seek. I think it was around Christmas and uh, I forget who was it, but I, I was hiding. So uh, I think Austin went downstairs and Lane went uh, to one of the guest bedrooms and I decided to go to Mama and Papaw's room. I was like, I'm gonna go hiding under all the clothes in the closet. So I'm sitting there and time's passing by and I hear Papaw's little card game, you know, boot up that he plays when he's on the toilet. So um, I'm stuck in Papaw's closet uh, about 10 feet away while he's uh, taking a deuce. Uh, needless to say, I think I won that game of a uh, hide and seek. I don't have a funny story, but I just wanted to say what an amazing man he is. He is so loving and caring. He would do anything for me. I guess I could say he's done everything for me. He's always said his goal in life is to make me happy and I've really given him a big job. He's been a great father, uh, very caring, a good Christian man, and I feel like I'm the luckiest girl in the world. 25, 25 years or less. Uh, 30 years or less, 30 years. One word for pap for dad would be, well, there's several words. Uh, ethics, uh, commitment, there's just so many. Loving. Expert. Teacher. Joyful. Creative. Stubborn. Passionate. Devoted. Amazing. Faithful. Holy. Shepherd. He's a great dad. Thank you for taking a chance on me so many years ago. Together forever in Christ is the promise where heaven has started.
Some say don't give up and hope that your good is good enough. Head down, keep on working. If you can earn it, you deserve it. Some say push on through. After all, it's the least that you can do. But don't buy what they're selling. It couldn't be further from the truth. What if I were the one to tell you? news ever some say don't ask for help god helps the ones who help themselves so press on get it right otherwise get left behind some say he's given so so try hard then try a little more but hold up if this were true explain to me what the cross is for a ghost there's a ghost inside of me not like those dreams in old bed sheets saying trick or treat different oh this ghost is different not one that leaves me scared to death Puts my fears to rest. Oh, holiness keep haunting me. Oh, you are my hope, you are my peace. Ironic in a way, I'm no longer afraid. And the ghost is to blame. There's a ghost. There's a ghost inside of me. Not something from some campfire story where I'm terrified to sleep. This ghost is quite the opposite He came just like a welcome friend And I was comforted Oh, holiness keep haunting me
talk and I can kind of add to yeah, her conversation yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Exactly. She did a lot of 4-H speeches. Right. She did some, well, it was 4-H. Was it 4-H? It wasn't 4-H. Uh, but anyhow, she did win her speeches and then... Uh, <laughs> Okay. okay. It wasn't for it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Anyhow, they can hear you laughing. Uh, I cut it out. That's what editing's for. She yeah. not only broke her nose, but yeah. she broke her arm, well, falling she... off of the couch in the basement. No, yeah. She actually yeah. was a chair, but <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever chair. <laughs> Anyhow, she broke. She broke her. She broke her arm. Okay. <laughs> Let me get my voice. <clears throat> we mean like him. He'll say it. How long? What? Come on, stop, tell us stop the video. Please tell me Did it on. record? It is recording. It is. Hold on. Quit. <laughs> Quit. I still don't trust it. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Your phone looks crooked. We're rolling. It's not. It's fine. You think it's crooked? I don't know. I, it, well, look, maybe you don't look crooked. There. Okay. So are we rolling? Yeah. Okay, so I have many, many memories of, of Papa and I. Most of them are outdoors, hunting, fishing. Uh, you when mean I, Dad. That's what I said. You said Papa. Dad. Denise is always calling me up about three seconds before she needs me to do this. <laughs> she's laughing because she's here. She knows. 